Good morning friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options and this is the Morning Market Prep video for June 30th, 2023. Well, we're winding down the first half of the year and we had a little bit of rally yesterday getting things going, but it, it happened on relatively light volume. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. So looking at the diamonds chart, we had a good run yesterday pushing up. And the nice thing to see it was it was it was much more broad based. It wasn't just big tech pushing things to the upside. So we're break we broke this resistance um yesterday and we're trying to pump in the pre-market this morning pumping up to see if we can retest this bigger resistance in the chart now keeping in mind we have not been able to get above this level and stay above this level since um sometime in december so that would be a big move if we can break through that um, area up there. Now, if we were to fail at that area, then that is going to constitute a potential, well, a lower high. If we were to fail at that area, a lower high, which could really um, bring in some sellers. So watch carefully for that. We are a bit, and we'll show you here in a bit with the T2122, we're in that overbought. Um, area of the market now that being said we still have this upside trend so if we were to uh, fail up here pulling back maybe into this area or down into um, a little bit lower area to test that trend might hold and save us and if we look at our moving averages in here you can see that we've held at our 50-day moving average so possibly it would be just a retest of that 50. now taking a look if the bulls were to continue to be inspiration uh, find inspiration beyond this level here then notice that we could push right on up and re retest these um, high breakouts to see whether or not we're gonna stick this time or if we just pump through and then pull back. If the bears find inspiration today, well then I would suggest the possibility would be we would retest yesterday's low, come back down into that support area of the chart. Let's take a look at the SPY, SPY. All rallying up yesterday. This is a very, very bullish chart. There's no way you can look at this chart and have any bearishness in it at all. We do, however, have that possibility that we could run into a little bit of resistance of that gap right there. We're trying to pump through that here in the pre market. We'll see if that can um, push on through. And remember, we've got that end of quarter window dressing um, that is likely happening. And that's probably why we were able to rally as much as we did yesterday yesterday on relatively low volume so watching um, this chart here if the bulls can continue to push on through then i would not rule out the possibility that we could retest these highs here in um, the spy but if we were to fail to make it there then watch for that possibility if, if any of the data today brings out those bears then i would watch for uh for that possibility of that lower high still could come into play and we could still come back in and test this support and trend just keeping in mind that our moving averages here on this chart are still a long ways away our 58 we stretch so far away from our 50-day moving average we would have to rest another couple of weeks before our 50-day moving average even catches up to uh, current price. Looking at our uh, QQQ, QQQ remains the most overextended uh, stock or index in the market and largely because of just about 10 of the giant tech companies that just continue to pump and pump and pump to the upside despite their valuations being way out of sync with um, you know normal practices everyone is really keyed in that you know that tech is going to carry us through and it may we just may do that i don't know 
but we'll have to be a little bit careful once we start approaching earnings. Now, keeping in mind here, if the bulls can continue to push, well, we could re push right up in there and I'm gonna use that big black candle up there as possible resistance in the chart on the QQQ. Yesterday was the only, uh, QQQ was the only index that took a little bit of a break. Um, with some of the big techs actually um, feeling just a little bit of selling. This morning they're trying to pre-market, pump that up. Maybe we can test that area up there and if we can continue to find inspiration, retest that resistance on higher um, that we tested before. Now, keeping in mind, we could also run into that situation here where if we create that lower high, then I would be looking for a pullback back down into here to uh, test that support at a minimum and then maybe even all the way coming back into that trend and if you think about it there is reason for that because we're we're probably two weeks away from the kickoff of earnings and you know the big bank earnings reports and um and it'll be three plus weeks away before we're going to uh, really kick into um, tech earnings. So there's going to be some uncertainty about that and we could rest here just a little bit. Now, keeping in mind, if the bears were to find inspiration today, pushing back down into that area um, is about the only place. There is a little bit of support right there. So it is possible we could stop. Um, any pullback right in there on the day. Let's take a look at our moving averages here on T21 or um, on um, the QQQ, noticing that um, we are still a long ways away from our 50 day moving average. So just keeping in mind, a healthy market tends to retest that 50 day moving average uh, a, a lot. And what we've done is we've extended so far away. And that's why the NASDAQ remains the most overextended index in the, the market. Let's take a look at our IWM. Now, one thing that was um, pretty surprising, honestly, to me yesterday is that IWM had as much strength as it was. This was the strongest of the indexes yesterday, pushing up right on through that resistance like it wasn't even there. And now we have that chance that we could retest this resistance here in the chart. And you can see, although we have broken through it, we've had an awful hard time holding above that since um, you know January of, um, La, or excuse me, June of last year. So um, keep a close eye on that as we approach that resistance. If the bulls can continue to find that inspiration and even pop through there, well, I would suggest we're probably gonna come right up here and test this last breakout to see whether or not that's going to hold as resistance. If the bears were to find inspiration and you can see um, the certainly the, the possibility that they could in this um, area in here, then watch for that potential, that uh, lower high double top kind of situation right in here and maybe a pullback to retest some support areas, possibly in here or down into here. Let's take a look at our uh, VIX. Now our VIX continues to be almost nonsensical um, anymore where we had the VIX barely falling yesterday with such a bullish move in the market. So we're still down here in a very complacent area of the market. The market is just so um, um, ragingly bullish right now that we've become very very complacent thinking there's nothing that could stumble us despite the fact that we're seeing a lot of data um, the data yesterday was not conducive to an upside rally particularly with in light of the Fed and um, if you need some proof of that all you got to do is look at our bond yields um, over here on Bloomberg our bond yields shot up yesterday and they're continuing to go up this morning right now our two-year bonds are looking at 4.92% uh, this morning. Six month bonds were um, moving up toward 5.5% on six month, 5.26% on that three month. And then notice the inversion of the 210, we're at 492 here, we're at 388. So now we're well over 100 basis points inverted on that 210, which, um, has never in Fed history has that not led to a substantial recession. I'm not saying that this time has to be the same, but it's something we need to be paying attention to. So as that data comes in hot, um, that is keeping the Fed 
um, uh, keeping the Fed engaged in um, their hawkish activities and raising rates. So the VIX being this complacent is a little bit odd to me. Taking a look at our uh, T2122, our T2122 indicator is way up here in the overbought um, area of the market. So if the bulls can continue to find inspiration, I want you to notice, by the way, um, T2122 can never go above 100. Okay, just can't do it. It can be at 100, but it can never go above 100. And it's because it's a four week new high, new low ratio. Only 100% of the stocks out there can go, um, you know, uh, super, super bullish. And then we kind of run out of that bullish energy and we pull back. So if the bulls can continue to pump today in the last day of in the quarter window dressing, then we've got a little tiny bit of upside possibility. If the bears were to engage today, then I want you to kind of keep in mind we have a pretty big downside opportunity. So consequently, if we push up pretty strongly today, then I'm probably going to be looking for some short trades, um, looking for that pullback at any time here in the market. Taking a look at our T2108, T2108 also stretching up there yesterday and at the end of the day surging just a little bit. And you can see right up here, we're pushed back up into that resistance high, 64% of the stocks above their 40 day moving average. We're not quite into that super, super frothy area. When we start reaching over that 65% up into the 75%, we're reaching that really overbought condition in the short term. So keep that in mind. Um, but that was good for the bulls yesterday, pushing back up into that resistance. Our T2107 also had a good day for the bulls, pushing back up up into that recent price resistance in the chart. 50% of the stocks above their 200-day um, moving average. And keep in mind, when we start going above 50% 50, 50 here in T2107, we start to reach that kind of over uh, extended condition. We've, we've certainly done much more than that before, shooting up in lots of exuberance, but then that usually leads to a substantial pullback. So watch carefully. We're kind of in that overbought situation here in the market. Doesn't mean we can't go higher, but we should be tightening up our stops, watching for a little bit of price, um, that possibility that uh, pullback could occur at any time. Let's take a look at our uh, T2101. Now, the breadth yesterday of the market hooked back to the upside. We had just enough energy to hook us back to the um, upside on this. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily upside in the market. Remember, absolute breadth does not tell us direction. This is despite the, the direction of the market where the breadth is going. And sometimes when we get that shift, like this, we hook over again, the upside move may be coming to an end and we may be seeing a breadth increase on the short side. So watch that carefully. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now our economic calendar, the things we're gonna be thinking about here this morning is this core PCE number. Despite the fact that we could still get that into quarter window dressing and that nice little pump up in the pre-market here and even pump into the end of the day, just keeping in mind that that core PCE number could be very, very important. First off, uh, European uh, uh, numbers came out with a decline in inflation overall, but their core numbers ticked higher and there is a concern there's a there's been some stories on this that our um, actual core PCE number has also ticked higher um, this week so watch for that potential that could be very bearish for the market depending on how those bear uh, bears engage or if they engage um, it, it all depends on the dynamics between that end of quarter window dressing and, and, and how they react in there. But just keeping in mind, if our core goes up, then that's going to keep that Fed engaged and more hawkish uh, for a period of time. Um, remember, we've got Chicago PMI after that, which is still expecting to come in well below growth, showing uh, somewhere around 44 
Um, remember, we've got to be at 50% to just be at stall speed. We're, we're dead even. We're not growing. And we're well below that, continuing to show that economy is slow. And then consumer sentiment coming in um, after that or right now, consensus is expecting that that's going to tick higher, which is interesting. We're seeing all of these internal numbers, uh, manufacturing and PMI numbers staying very, very weak. But consumers are very, very engaged, continuing to spend like crazy. Credit card debt is at record highs. Um, as they continue to press, which is kind of um, unfortunate when you think that most credit card rates um, now are above 20%. At some point in time, that's going to um, be kind of a hardship, I think, for a lot of those consumers. So let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar for today. And unfortunately, our earnings calendar doesn't have much uh, going on here. As a matter of fact, there's only two confirmed reports and one of them is like a 60 cent stock. Um, so the only notable here for today would be Constellation Brands. Keep an eye on that. Looks like it's trying to pop through here. Uh, to the upside this morning. It's been in a nice upside trend. You'll want to be keeping an eye on this um, once again as we start approaching these um, upside resistance areas in the chart, but still beautiful upside move and continuing to follow through this morning. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could also do me that favor, and that would be click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much to everyone who does do that. Now, I want to let everyone know that right way options will be closed. Actually, hit run candlesticks and right way options will be closed on Monday. Um, Monday is likely going to be, you know, just a really rough day for the market out there. Um, so many people gone. Uh, volumes will probably be light. So we decided to just give everyone a break and um, have a nice, uh, nice holiday weekend here coming up. So. Um, we will not be back until Wednesday, so the next morning market prep video will be next Wednesday, uh, being closed Monday and Tuesday, of course, Tuesday for the holiday. Um, so let's take a look um, at some of these charts setting up. And remember, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, with um, with the you know the holiday coming up, you're going to want to be really, really careful and be thinking carefully 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 about how much risk you want to take into the long weekend just knowing that just about anything anything can happen um on holiday weekend so just be prepared for that and we're so extended in the short term that um starting next quarter we could easily see that pullback begin let's take a look um, at some stocks that i'm paying attention to and watching um very very interested in paypal here um thought carefully about it we popped up early in the day yesterday thought carefully about buying you know uh, buying that and decided that i was going to wait just simply because of the pending holiday and that turned out to save me some money yesterday not rushing um, into trades as we pulled all the way back now we're getting a little bit of bullish pop here this morning on paypal so i do think it is still in that buy zone um, watch that carefully here in the chart um, take a look at our dollar our u.s dollar surged up yesterday um, as our bond yields continue to rise the u.s dollar is strengthening so um, kind of oddly um, when that was going on we also saw energy um, moving up so we had a little buy whoops let's go to xle um, energy surging back up so take a look here at xle xle is pressing against some price resistance right here in the chart if we can pop through that and we've done it before here just recently we popped through but we weren't able to hold it if we can pop through and hold up here well then i think there may be some upside coming in those energy stocks i'd watch that pretty closely here in the market if you take a look at some of um 
uh, the stocks out here, I um, there was news yesterday. Warren Buffett has added more to his um, Occidental um, um, purchase, um, his position here going up. So watch that carefully, uh, breaking this downtrend here yesterday, just ever so slightly. So any consolidation rest or pullback in here, I think sets up that upside opportunity here in Occidental. So keep an eye on some of these oil sector stocks. They're really starting to show some signs that we may perk up. As long as that demand doesn't keep falling, uh, particularly over in China. Then let's take a look at um, our natural gas, UNG. UNG um, still holding in this bullish trend. We had three days of a pullback, a little bit of buying coming in there yesterday. So what I'm watching for, and by the way, I'm in this trade, so I have a bias. Um, watching this closely, if we can hold in here and hold on to this little bit of a, a trend, then I wanna see us break through up here and then prove to hold. Break through that resistance, proof to hold up here, and then I'm probably going to be adding in a bigger position here on natural gas for that upside move. And I've done that before, where I just, uh, you know, made a, a, a huge profit in the trade, breaking this downtrend over here, making that higher low, catching into that trade, and it was just a beautiful upside move. So I'm watching the same over here. What's interesting is we're well below um, that buy point over here. I just don't think we're gonna be done with natural gas here in the very near future. We're gonna be needing it for a while, so watch that one closely. Um, other places that um, were kind of interesting yesterday, FCX, despite the fact that the dollar was uh, falling yesterday, um, FCX found some price support, copper, trying to move up. And I'm watching this closely and actually I hold a small position in, in FCX as well. So again, probably a little bit of a bias here, but watching for this potential that we may break this downtrend in here in that chart. And by the way, I usually don't buy like this just to give you a heads up. I usually don't buy down in this area below that downtrend. Um, just usually not my style. I want to see that that break and that little pullback but i like the chart enough that i thought there was it was worth taking a small position in here so holding a higher low above that downtrend is where i'm going to be really interested in copper so keep an eye on that you may want to take a look at cf industries we're starting to see a little bit of a pop here in um, cf on some of those ag um, areas again um, not something you would normally see when the dollar is rising, but we're starting to see some of those commodity type prices come in um, agricultural type uh, stocks moving up. So nice little pop yesterday and recovery, kind of a rejection of yesterday's low. Watch that area up here. I'm, as you can see, breaking the downtrend, holding the higher low. That's my game. And I start that upside trend and I'll be looking for an opportunity maybe in CF. Um, let's take a look at some other stocks um, looking pretty good. We saw some movement in some of the retail stocks yesterday. Now notice Texas Instruments is really pressing against this major um, resistance area in the chart. But we're pressing up here again. We, we, we're not rejecting. So watch that carefully if we were to break through up here. There may be some upside opportunity in there. On the healthcare side, take a look at stocks like J&J. Um, &J. We had a pretty good rally here yesterday on J&J, &J, but I'm a little bit concerned here that J&J &J is continuing to fail along this line here. As this rallies back up, I would be watching for that possibility. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but watching for that possibility that we run into some resistance or run into resistance here, we double top or we put in a lower high and then I'd be looking for a short position, possibly in J&J. &J. So keep an eye on that. Um, it's, it's a pretty overbought stock, um, PE ratio wise in the market. So watch that closely. Um, if we take a look at other places out there, um, we've got some um, pretty good, um, pretty good moves here in Home Depot. Home Depot breaking through this resistance here in the chart right up here, breaking through that resistance pulling back, resting to hold. Notice we filled this gap. If we can hold this upside trend in here, then we may have some upside opportunities to be coming along. I'd be watching that close. In the in the gambling area, um, we we love we love online gambling and um, DKNG 
uh, working a breakout here yesterday. It finished the day pulling back just a little bit, but you can see they're trying to push it up through here in the pre-market today. So DKNG might be something to also be keeping a close eye on. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for participating in these videos. It means the world to me. Be careful. Be safe. Have a wonderful, wonderful 4th of July holiday. We'll see you right back here bright and early Wednesday morning. Wish you all of the best.